Dear respected national advisor Father Jesu Benjamin Tamil Nadu state advisor Father Parthasarathy members of the ICAF national council and students let me at the outset congratulate you and thank all those who built up ICAF for nearly 100 years great has been their and your work amidst challenges and hopes St Ignatius when hit by a cannon ball had a challenge but he kept to his dream and hope and he became a leader of the Jesuits and today we walk in his footsteps the youth in general possess enormous power and they have the potential to do the impossible and the unexpected much depends on how they are motivated and accompanied or guided you are here as the representatives of this power to reckon with in nation building give me 100 energetic young men and i shall transform india said swami vivekananda give me just one generation of youth and i will transform the whole world said vladimir lenin and jesus of nazareth had just 12 men who practically reached out to the entire world and made their best attempt to transform the world and we are here to think how we can transform the world for the better a handful of people could make a world of difference There was one Nelson Mandela in South Africa. There was just one Martin Luther King Jr in the United States of America. And there was only one Mahatma Gandhi in India to make a world of difference in our world history and people's empowerment. The youth could be directed to do the best or the worst. During the corona pandemic We have seen how so many youngsters especially muslim brethren fearlessly volunteered to bury those who died of corona infection when the family members and close relatives were afraid of handling the corona dead these youngsters without any discrimination of caste or creed gave decent burial as per the religious custom of the deceased we can also give example of the youth being used to for destructive end recall the so called 911 twin tower attack in 2001 the youngsters were intelligent and highly motivated they got distinction in their engineering studies in germany they were licensed pilots from saudi arabia and they were taking special simulator training in the usa for 5 years just to take a u turn of the plane in flight with a ground speed of about 900 kilometers per hour without losing the balance they hit to the famous twin towers in new york prayer to the destructive action they fasted and prayed because they were brainwashed that what they do is something good the youth are like the raw material they could be used for constructive or destructive purpose much depends on how we motivate them and how we guide them to do in life and the youth are not the finished products they are work in progress there is a paradigm shift in the global scenario earlier especially in the middle ages it was top down approach if you enlighten the ruler the people would be enlightened if you convert the king his people would embrace the same religion but later the paradigm became a bottom up if you build up the bottom of the social pyramid it would result in nation building the youth are the fundament of any society and nation and we need to shape them up icaf as an offspring of jesuit educational pedagogy is there to look at the society 
one lives in and to do the needful to make it better. The members of ICAF are aware that we are born in an unequal or, or unjust society. But we also know and are convinced that we should not leave the society as we find it. We need to do our best to transform the society as a better place of unity, justice and harmony. We need to raise our voice and it might sound like a voice in the wilderness. Think of the lone person who was thundering all alone 2000 years ago. He said, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth. It was John the Baptist who raised his voice against the economic disparity, against social discrimination, against political exploitation, against religious fundamentalism, etc. His voice was heard by a simple carpenter, Jesus of Nazareth. He echoed the voice heard in the wilderness on the mountaintop that was heard by a group of 12. And today it is heralded across the ocean and many have come forward to become the voice of the voiceless. In our own days, we have seen how Father Stan Swami became the voice of the unheard Adivasis and the Dalits. Of course, John the Baptist, Jesus of Nazareth, all his disciples, and now Father Stan Swami all paid the price of raising their concern against dominion and power on behalf of the needy and the helpless as well as hopeless people. And we are here to take inspiration from them all and many more. We are here to ask ourselves the three questions that St. Ignatius of Loyola would often put forth. One, what have I done against social and religious fundamentalism in order to bring about unity and harmony? Two, what are we doing in the present context of COVID-19 especially for the continued education and formation of the youth? And three, what should I do in the future to build up a fair and just society? This could be your repetitive inner voice that could serve as impulse for your deliberations for future planning. ICAF has its origin from the Christian tradition. Could we ask now ourselves the question, what is Christian? Is it in professing the dogmas of an institution called the church, whether local or national or global? Or is it universal teaching for the well-being of all the people? Some of you might remember Vinayak Narahari Vinoba Bhave, fondly remembered as Acharya Vinoba Bhave. He is considered as a national teacher of India and the spiritual successor of Mahatma Gandhi. He was an advocate of non-violence and human rights. He started the Bhumidan movement. He would coax those who had too much land to share part of their lands with the landless. Here I see in practice what Jesus of Nazareth said 2,000 plus years ago, let him who has two shirts share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Or think of Jayaprakash Narayan, popularly known as JP or Lok Nayak, meaning people's leader. He was an Indian independence activist, social and political leader, he wanted a total revolution to revamp the Indian polity. JP, for me, seems to reflect what Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for people and not people for the Sabbath. Let us be inspired by the past in order to influence the future by transforming our present life. 
These great people and many others in the nation and in the world reflected and lived out people-centric Christian values. They are recognized by Karl Rahner, a German theologian par excellence, as anonymous Christians. And Eichhoff has been, in my opinion, trying to translate God-centered church dogmas into people-centered Christian values, namely faith that does justice. You cannot preach to an empty stomach, for an empty stomach has no air. Now, these people, though non-Christians, have lived out Christian values of the other-centered. In a world of self-centered, these people lived out the Christian faith as well as what St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuit order, said, namely, your salvation is in the salvation of the people you serve. The Bible says that God created human beings in his image and likeness. This implies that each one of us contain in us a semblance of God and we bear a part of God. Only when we all become one, we may get the one God who created all of us. Hence, either we all reach God as a whole or we miss him totally. This is the principle and foundation of our being meaningful for the lives of others. In this sense, Eichhoffers need to transcend the Christian values and make them as the yeast to transform the society for the better. In your deliberations, you would surely reflect on the challenging and pathetic social and political situation in our nation. You would also think how the youth could offer themselves to rebuild the society. You would realize that today the youngsters are in confusion, which makes them hopeless and directionless. They need a direction, impulse to make the direction meaningful, and clarity of purpose to live and live out concretely their obligation to the society. We need to ask ourselves, what do we have to offer to them who ask, why should I live today when I do not have means to study and possibility of getting a job? You need to show them the way who are not able to see light at the end of the long and dark tunnel of lives in poverty and suppression. You need to assure them that you would walk with them hand in hand and you would stand with them for their reaching their goal of fullness of life. You need to have a plan with timeline for the young who are on the road that leads them nowhere. As national council members and advisors, you have the challenge and the privilege to offer them hope and confidence. The youth in any milieu need mindset and momentum. Once they have set their mind to accomplish something great, they would work rain or shine. And if there is someone to accompany them, they would gain momentum to keep going till the end. They should realize the meaning of the words in the book. You are the salt and you are the light of the world. They should bring in the values of equality and equity, which should preserve, like the salt, the worthiness of social life. And they should show the light of walking along the path of righteousness and justice. In other words, they should know that they are the meaning of the present society and they are the direction of the future society as they are the saplings today and tomorrow they would be the banyan trees of the social structure. At times, they feel inadequate or insignificant. But think of the history of David and Goliath. David, just a little shepherd boy, challenged Goliath, who was an accomplished warrior. And with a little stone in the catapult, David could bring the Goliath to ground. 
we need to give now and then a shot of self-confidence and collective solidarity to face the giant and monster of the social discrimination. Some time ago, I read the book A Crusade for Social Justice by P. N. Krishnan, and now I read the book Republic of Caste by Anand Tiltumde. One central theme in both these huge and well-researched volumes is lands and properties. The dominant castes wield power because they are the landlords. And the suppressed castes who do not possess any property concentrate on education. This has frightened the oppressors as the balance of power would one day tilt towards the Dalits, Adivasis, and the lower ranks in the social system. The outward expression is competing with the reservation policy in education and in job market. The real power springs from education. Nelson Mandela has rightly said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. The Jesuits also believe that education is the key to eliminate all problems in the society and we need to grow and be successful in getting education as well as in imparting education. In Loyola Chennai, we are planning on starting liberal arts program which would include political science as well. Jesuit education aims at formation of leaders. We need charismatic and credible leaders for political and social justice. Once education is guaranteed and is accessible to the people at the margin, we need to do one more implementation of social principle. This is the Ubuntu principle originating from Africa. It's a form of humanism which professes, I am because of who we all are. It is the essence of a human being, the divine spark of goodness inherent within each being. This is again building up a social system with what little we have and expand to meet greater challenges. This is reflected in the mantra of Dr. Ambedkar, educate, agitate, organize. I would change the priority slightly. First educate, then organize people for a common cause, and finally agitate with much bargaining power when the people at the bottom of the social pyramid become the power to reckon with. Today, social discrimination and religious fundamentalism are the cancers that are eroding the fabric of the society. And you are the ones who should show the way for your companions. When we face any evil, social, religious, or political, our choice is to face or to fight. I would end with the words of Swami Vivekananda, fly from evil and terror and misery, and they will follow you. Face them and they will flee. One such person in our time who stood with the people to face social and political evil is Father Stan Swami. He could inspire us today. Let us be the change we want to bring in. And the change in us could cause the ripple effect or the butterfly effect in influencing or impacting the rest of the world. All the best for your individual reflections and for your collecting deliberations leading to action plan with timeline to transform the society. Thank you. All the best.